Hi, Sarah. Hi. Welcome to the journey. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's a pleasure (laughs) finally having you here as well. And you have an incredible voice. Well, thank you. I must start by saying. (laughs) Um, So where did your career as a mainstream singer begin? Well, career, probably I'd say last year, because I've been singing for a really long time, but I haven't actually launched out into a career in that sense. Mm -hmm. So I um, officially released a a debut single November last year, 2015, and it's just taken off (laughs) since then, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you were born in the UK, but you had the opportunity to live in Nigeria for some years. Correct. Is that where your passion for singing began? I'd say yes, because obviously I um, listen to a lot of Motown, a lot of um, classical music and stuff like that through the influence of my parents. So growing up listening to all of that kind of defined my taste for music right. and also sort of shaped the kind of writing and, you know, stylized my delivery of music as well. So yeah, in a sense, yes, um, that pretty much defined me musically, just growing up and having that influence with mm-hmm. my parents. Yeah. Could you ever see yourself relocating and going to settle down in Nigeria, maybe starting? Well, I wouldn't say you would have to restart your career yeah. there, but just continuing. I mean, it could Nigeria? always it would always be an option to consider. That would always be on the table. Mm-hmm. It would be something that would need to be really thought through. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, just to make sure that one is making the right choice. But there's always that option. So yeah, Wonderful. worth considering. Yeah. Let's talk about your Mobo nomination. Yeah. <laughs> How did you feel when you first heard that you had been nominated for a Mobo? Because I know we sit there and watch TV and we're like, yeah, Mobo was, can't wait to be there, I want to be in the audience. And then you're uh, being invited to be on stage and then, hey, Absolutely. I'm a nominee. I know, I was Crazy. about falling out of my chair, literally. I can cause, imagine. Because <laughs> I got the call while I was, I was at work at my desk and um, a few <laughs> of my colleagues know that I sing, but not that many. So. I got a call from a, a, a known number, you know, and I'm usually not aching to picking up those sort of calls. Because it's also it's always PPI. PPI people. So what I, was, what I usually do is when they ring and I pick up, I kind of leave it. Yeah. So they just go, hello, 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 and then, mm. you know, I just end the call. But when, you know, I picked up the call, I just kept quiet. And the person on the other end went, hello. And it sounded a bit familiar, the voice. I'm yes. like, hello. Like, I knew this person, maybe it was Lady T, mm, but then wow. she, I kind of, I was wondering why she was calling me with a hidden number, so she was like, oh, how would you feel if I told you that you've been nominated? I was like, Did you like drop the phone and pass out there? <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> scream, but I was at my desk at work, so it was so you had to hard. Remain composed and be like, it was so hard to stay imagine. composed, and I was squirming and, you know, moving all around in my mm. seat, and... Some of my colleagues were looking at me with those, you know, suspiciously and thinking, what is going on with her? Because I kept going, promotion? What's happening here? I was, it was so, it, mm. imagine trying to scream and not being able to scream. I've been there before. It was a crazy <laughs> place to be. I was so excited. But yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. Mm. And yeah, I'm just grateful for it, really. Of course. Yeah. Now, I've done a bit of digging. And allegedly you're signed to your own record label, is this correct? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm an independent artist, so technically, yes. So, ha- have you launched a record label? Well, how does this work? Well, as an independent artist, one is not just a singer. Mm. So, I'm responsible for everything, including trying to promote myself, okay. trying to market myself, mm. trying to get gigs for myself, okay. you know, branding myself. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't do it all, um, I don't, how do I put it out? I don't do it all independently in quotes. I try and get support where I can, try and get advice where I can, because I don't know everything about marketing. And you'd be I don't know everything about try. Yeah, so I, I do what I can, but then I kind of get advice and get consultation and, you know, support, sometimes pay for services. But having that whole, you know, holistic view of mm. the industry is what independent artists should do. And I think sometimes we fail ourselves by thinking that we're just singers and we don't have to do anything executive. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I may not have a... Sony or a Virgin, you know, record deal. But mm. in effect, because I'm pushing out my music, I should be thinking like an executive and thinking, what other things I need to do, what other things I need to put in place in order for my music to go as far as it can. Of course. And then maybe one day a record label would be interested in me because they can see the way that I think and be like, yeah, this is a good fit for our model. And, mm-hmm. You know, so but yeah, so technically it's an independent label mm-hmm. and just trying to do all I can to push the music out there really. Okay. Did your faith in God grow or develop when you and your family were facing challenging times? I read that, you know, you went through being evicted, you were homeless, very turbulent times. Yeah, it was really, really hard. And as a young um, person who's always ever known to believe in God, Mm. you get to a point where you wonder if God is really there. Oh, yeah. How is he watching you go through these challenging times? When you believe in him. You you believe in him, you go to church, you do everything. Mm. So why, why, why can we not afford to live in a house why are we being kicked out mm. and we're having to live in a school because we actually got kicked out oh yeah it was it was so um it was a really tragic experience 
um, because my dad, it started from my dad losing his job and because my mum wasn't working at the time, so there was really no source of income. Of course. So, and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm so driven because I don't want to be so in the, so dependent rather. It's just like, no, 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 I need to have a career. I need oh, to yeah. be able to stand on my mm. own two feet. My husband is a great man, but mm -hmm. you know, you never know what could happen in the future. You want to be able to be there in the event of, you know, anything happening. So when my dad lost his job and my mum didn't really work, it was really turbulent for us. We couldn't afford to stay where we were living. We got kicked out. And through those periods, it was really painful for me as a young child slash Christian. And one of the things that kept me going was just knowing that in all of this, somehow it was going to work out. It was going to turn out for my good. And I kept encouraging myself by reading scriptures of people who've had difficult times in the Bible. Like Starting Job. job. Oh, yes, that's like where we all it, it, it literally, <laughs> and there's a reason why God made Job go through that. So he could be mm. the poster child, if you like, for going through tribulation, coming out victorious. And that was literally one thing that I held on to. And whenever I go out to minister, I try and encourage people, especially young people, who feel that um, poverty is an excuse to be in, you know, in gangs, to be mm. prostituting, to do drugs. And it's not. It's not. That should be the reason why you're driven to succeed oh, yeah. in, in the most, um, in, how do I put it, the most legitimate way, as mm. opposed to going you know, down you know, criminal routes and stuff like that. Um, you know, so... Like that. It, yeah, and that, yeah, it is. Yeah, so pretty much it kind of defined my faith and refined my faith in God as well. Wonderful. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. Thank you. Do you ever feel pigeonholed because of the genre of music you you sing? Like maybe certain TV stations won't invite you for interviews, certain radio stations won't play your music. Shouldn't it just be about? creating amazing music and everyone being accepted as an artist. I agree totally and I do sometimes wonder why um, gospel artists almost have to be sidelined in oh, a sense because yeah. I look at some great um, music awards that recognise great things, great um, albums and art and creativity and I find that everything gospel gets boxed into one place, whatever they sing, be it jazz, <laughs> you know, Afrobeat, so R and B, rap. God or as long as they hear a God, it, oh, it yeah. suddenly becomes a new genre. Mm. I have heard some amazing rap albums that could be nominated as best rap. Full stop. Like right? Cray? For, exactly. Incredible, right? Forget about forget about whether it's gospel. It, their album is a in the rap genre, and it should be nominated with all the rap, you know, all the rap albums. The R and B gospel artists who sing as good as any other R and B artist should just be. An R&B artist, I agree with you, you, you know, but they kind of, you know, as you said, pigeonhole the gospel artist into one specific box because we sing a message. Well, we, we don't control the industry; that's the way it is. But which is why, when we have our own Christian <laughs> awards and stuff like that, we tend to have categories. So you have the R&B category and yeah. stuff like that. And I think it's good for artists to get that recognition because it really does encourage, you know, people who are working really hard to make sure that there is some good stuff out there, mm -hmm. you know, with a gospel label. On it, so yeah, wonderful. You'll be performing at the Hard Rock Cafe, indeed, on the 18th of January. Correct, I'm correct. Yeah. How do you feel about that? What are your expectations of that night? I am, yeah, I don't even have words to describe how I feel right now because it's a mixture of excitement and a bit of nerves as well. Because apparently, it's never been done where you've got a gospel artist headlining at the Hard Rock Cafe, so there's you're the first, the first lady. I think, would you say? I think <laughs> probably, yes. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, there's quite a bit of um. Expect well, yeah, the expectations are quite high, and um, yeah, I'm just trying to stay level headed and just work hard and prepare for the day. And um, I'm also excited because I'm going to be sharing some new music that's not on the um, existing album. I look forward to hearing yeah, at least, at least, a, at least a couple of songs will be coming out from my new project on the night. So, um, and I'm also looking forward to people who probably haven't had a taste of gospel music, you know, because they've introducing them to something exactly, new, introducing they all think something like new, hymns and. Could, yeah, it, it have could to be, be that yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. So mm. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to, I've, I've said to lots of my friends, you know, bring people who probably haven't been exposed to gospel music so they can actually see and appreciate the beauty and the inspiring message in gospel music. So I think those are the things I'm looking forward to on the 18th of June. Great. Yeah. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Do you ever feel as though you are any, under any intense pressure to live your life a certain way as a Christian musician? Mm -hmm. Because people are watching you, they're like, mm, she's a musician, which is also Christian, how will things transpire? Kind of like what they did with Beyonce. She's a Christian, but she's also, sometimes she dresses quite raunchy and all this stuff, and they're like, well, are you sure you're a Christian? Yeah, 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 I totally agree. There is, to be fair, because I've been singing since I was about 10 mm -hmm. in the choir, my mum has already kind of instilled that in me. <laughs> it's like, you can't dress like that, you're a choir girl. So, 
<laughs> you already know your boundaries. Pretty much, I have always had that. I was like, no, you can't wear that. You're a choir girl. They mm. see you right in front of the choir, standing there, you know, in church. So I've kind of had that going through. And I mean, I remember when I was a teenager, and I started, you know, growing my nails and painting them. And one of the senior choir ladies came to me and said, "You can't have your nails like that. You need praise and worship." So I'm kind of used to that, you know, expectation. People want you to be a certain way. But what I do is I do what I feel good and comfortable in. Okay. But I'm also conscious of people around me. So mm -hmm. I don't, I'm sensitive to other people. I'm just making sure that whatever I do, I'm moderate. Mm. And I'm comfortable and mm -hmm. I'm happy in whatever I wear, you know, however I smell. You know, <laughs> you seriously, smell? you'd be surprised <laughs> people have problems with perfume. Believe it or not, so <laughs> allergies, sensitive. Well, I don't know what it is, but things, yeah, various so. things. Interesting. Though. Yeah, okay. I know. that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what does gospel music mean to you? Gospel is simply good news, mm. and that's literally what it means in the Bible. So, whatever you sing in gospel, as long as it's bringing out the good news of Christ, however we do it. Some people think gospel music is praise and worship, and that's a huge mistake. Gospel music is anything that talks about the good news of Christ. And it could be through praise and worship, it could be through a song of encouragement, it could be through a song of motivation, through a song of inspiration. Mm. But ultimately, everything comes together and talks about the gospel, the good news of Christ, being the saviour of the world. And in my album, Walk With Me, for example, you know, I start with a song, Still My Joke, which is an upbeat song, but ultimately I talks about... Dancing, yeah, yeah, I did. I'm actually going <laughs> to take up, like I'm gonna take up dancing thing. in 2017. It's something in the back of my mind. I want to do proper, proper dance courses, That's if you know nice. anyone. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Still My Joy, for example, talks about, I won't let anything steal my joy. Mm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It still feeds into the scripture. And it, it I mean, lots of non-Christians are inspired by that song. Yes, and yes. at the end of the day, no matter how difficult or challenging their day is, they get inspiration through that song, and that's mm. what it's about. Mm. It's about giving people that strength that they need in, in time of you know of difficulty. And it might not be a big deal; it might just be trains being delayed, and you're completely flustered. Mm -hmm. You know, you just need that little you know boost to say, you know what, it's going to be fine. And then I've got "Save Me," for example, in my album, which is literally a cry for help to God mm -hmm. to save me. Mm. So, you know, if you put different, how do I put it? If you um put different messages in different tracks and songs it kind of helps with mm -hmm. you know, getting the whole message out there so yeah I like that I yeah. like your explanation thank, thank you for that you. so I'm going to ask you three questions mm -hmm. and I want you to answer them organically okay. just I'm going to shoot them at you all right let's go <laughs> <laughs> who is Sarah Tabor did I pronounce your name correctly yes that was perfectly yes yeah. Uh, in how many words do you want that? Because I could preach in a <laughs> sentence. In one sentence. In one sentence. Mm. Sarah Tabo is. She's crazy. She's determined. She's a workaholic. Um, she loves her family. Um, she's organised, and she she tries to tell herself that she's a risk taker. But are you? To an extent, yes. But I do exercise caution once in a while. <laughs> There's your sentence, so let's leave it at that. Leave the viewers one a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. What is your biggest accomplishment thus far? Having two daughters, um, I think, is my biggest accomplishment. Mm. Yeah, my two kids. And they have an amazing woman to look up to as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I'm grateful for that. I'm glad Absolutely you said yeah. You're like, yeah, definitely, <laughs> of course. And finally, what will your legacy be? Now, that is a big one. One thing I love to do is mentor and inspire young people and Same. yeah, mm -hmm. and I've got a number of mentees that I'm working with, not so much in music but in things like business, in just being able to manage ministry and you know the day job and stuff like that. So for me, my legacy would be to see other people succeed. Yes. You know, we need more and of that in the exactly, day and age. Absolutely. I just like to see other people succeed because it's all about we all going up together. Mm -hmm. There's no point in trying to succeed at the expense of other people or hoarding what we know and not allowing or enabling the next generation exactly. to know how to go out and do well. Very so, well said. Yeah, so mm. for me, my legacy, if there's anything, and I'm praying that God gives me wisdom on how to do it in a more organised and strategic way, is to help other younger ladies um, you know, to achieve their goals and their dreams. It doesn't have to be music, because mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm also an entrepreneur, so in whatever way that I can help people, okay. I love to empower and mentor and encourage people. So yeah, just Wonderful. giving it on to the next generation, passing it on to the next generation. Incredible. <laughs> Sarah, it has been an absolute pleasure meeting you, thank you. interviewing you, sitting with you. You're an extraordinary woman, oh, thank really. Thank you. I'm on the journey. We always bless our guests with gifts. Oh, and also, wow. it's the holiday season, near the new year. You deserve okay. it. You oh, worked bless. hard. Thank you. you. Know, see this as my gift to you. Oh, 
as I wasn't able to um, to say congratulations for being a MOBO nominee oh, and also congratulations that you'll be so on, in performing in oh, the Hard Rock Cafe. Thank you, so much. Thank, you. Yeah. thank you so much Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Oh, I wasn't expecting this. I don't want to cry. I'm <laughs> no, don't cry. Not <laughs>